not a lot of young people that look like me that were in a, a positions and doing things, and our voices were not being heard where I was from. So that drove me. Um, I started at Rowan University, and I met with my EOF counselor. And um, she was like, Amber, what are you interested in? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I always liked fashion, but again, in coming from Atlantic City, I didn't really see a lot of people in the industry. You had to go to Philadelphia or New York City, and I was like, whoa, big dreams out for me. Um, so I, you know, just kind of didn't really know what I liked. I had my family members, my mom had always been really involved in the community um, with startups that's like a coalition for a safe community, doing community walks, give backs and stuff, so I was always dragged along to these things. It wasn't always fun. Um, and so, in, being, in doing that, it laid a platform and a foundation for me of giving back, of being in service, of being a part of the conversation, of hearing with these people that were much more intelligent than I and much more experienced than I uh, had to say. So that was the foundation that was laid for me. So I started to talk to my EOF counselor and I was like, you know, I like talking to people, I like networking, you know, I don't know. Um, and she was like, well, why don't you try studying communication? And so I took up the field of communication studies. I've always, I've always been really ambitious, so I double majored in advertising and journalism. Um, double majored in advertising and PR and minor in journalism, because um, I like to write. And I was doing really good. Everything was seeming to go well. I was doing okay in my classes. I was like, see, get the degree student, you know? Um, <laughs> and so I, I was fine with it. And um, the sophomore, sophomore year, well, going into my junior year, I had found out I was pregnant with my son. And 19 year old Amber Hamlin um, realized that like things would change and I had to make a tough decision. And at that time, I had already felt that I had a lot of obstacles against me to be um, the first in my family. I, had, I felt like I had a lot of weight on my back to carry, to make it through and to be successful. And um, I didn't know what decision I was going to make, but after talking to my family and you know having their support, I decided to go forward with having my son. And so, um, God has a funny way of doing things. Um, I realized that I would uh, be giving birth to my son in September, which is fall semester. I knew that if I was going to be successful that I couldn't take a break because taking breaks that I would get caught up into the day-to-day -day and the work life, and I had a bigger dream. So I did take a break. I gave birth to my son September 18, 2013. I was enrolled, I transferred from Rowan to be online. I was enrolled in six classes online and working two jobs. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was difficult. Um, so uh, at that time, you know, I didn't realize because what happened is I heard Eric say, say it and I heard Dr. Harmon speak to it about a team. That sometimes your team is, you know, not the people that like you hire or you work with in your company and you eventually get there. But your team are your parents, your team are your siblings, your team are your friends that like believe in something. I'm sorry, I get emotional because this is like real. Um, but like your team are the people that really kind of keep pushing you forward when you feel like you can't. And um, many days they go to school <clears throat> and coming home and get my, my mom would tie my son to me with a little sheet and she's like, you know, I'll be right on my laptop doing work with my son tied to me and then I would work overnight. And many days I didn't sleep, but I was determined. Mm. You know, I was determined and I didn't know what my purpose would look like. I didn't know what my path was going to be, but I was determined not to quit. And so I kept going forward and that team kept driving me. And somehow, some way, I completed and I successfully graduated with my degree. Woo! And yeah! <laughs> my mom, she, she just really likes me like I'm the favorite. She was in school with me. Um, she was in her master's program and I was in uh, my bachelor's program and we graduated together with her with her master's and me and my bachelor's. Wow. And, um, you know, when I graduated, when I graduated, um, I didn't quite know what I was going to do. At Stockton University, which was Stockton College then, um, I had started a, a small public relations consulting firm called Sopro, where we offered PR services to local nonprofit organizations that couldn't afford marketing or PR. We took them on pro bono, um, and I started it up. I was the president and founder until I graduated. And so in that, I found this passion for like helping people in the marketing space. I realized that like a lot of businesses didn't see the value in PR and marketing. Um, they didn't have the disposable income um, to be able to pay someone to do those things. And so um, I wanted to help. 
Again, I want it to be a part of something that, like, I can walk into rooms with people and be like, you know, I'm from these 48 blocks. You know, I have something to say, I have something to give, and I became an expert in what I did. And what that was was connecting the dots, realizing who needed to be in the room with who, um, why they needed to be who's who's. I will always uh, invite myself to places where um, most people didn't invite me, but because I would just come there and um, and I, I made myself a seat at the table. There was not one created for me. Um, and so in that, in my journey, I got a call. Um, I was working at Rowan College in South Jersey at the time, one year out of uh, graduating college. And again, there were no real opportunities with my degree in Atlantic City or in the areas. And um, that was another reason why I wanted to plant myself in Atlantic City and kind of give back because I couldn't find a job. Every time I would interview when I had a phenomenal resume, I'm not just saying it really is good. Um, I, every time I would interview, they would say to me, you um, don't have enough experience. And I would say, well, how do you intend on me getting experience if you don't get any? You know? Um, so I couldn't get any job. I mean, I applied for marketing positions at the casinos. I, uh, I was like, I got this. Like, you need young, fresh blood out there. You know, I'm from here. I can tell you what you need to do. And I got denied every time. Um, so I took a, a job about an hour, two hours, both ways from me, Rowan College in South Jersey. And it was all intentional and all part of the bigger purpose because my director at the time, uh, when I was doing marketing for the Council and Wellness Center, she encouraged me to start my business, my PR firm. I used to talk to her all the time, like, this shift is happening in Atlantic City. You know, we need something new. Like, the economy being focused on the casino industry is not going to sustain us. Um, that Atlantic City is so important to the state of New Jersey. It's bigger than that. And, like, these conversations weren't happening, and people weren't having them like me. And why don't we have jobs for, you know, young people? Why do most people that graduate with a degree from my area leave and go to Philadelphia and go to New York City or go uh, across the coast? Why are they staying here? And I would just rant and rage, and she would listen. And she was like, well, "Why don't you start something?" Mm. And I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'll do it." And so I came up with the easiest name I could think of. My last name, Hamlet Consultant. I was like, "I'm gonna just be talking to people." And so that's what I did. I started it, and, and starting that, I'll say this, and I got a five minute time. I'm just going to be mindful of that. But I'll say this, and starting it a month and a half into LLC in my business. I had no real business plan. I had no idea that you needed money to start a business. I had no idea how you got clients. I had no idea how you charge for service. I had no understanding of any of that. What I did is that I continued to show up to places and listen to people that were smarter than me. I continued to be a part of the conversation. I continued to try and be determined and not give up. And in doing that, I got a call, which was a breakthrough for my business and my career to date. Um, I got a call from a friend that I went to high school with. His father was a former mayor. And he was like, hey, you know, it's right before COVID. <clears throat> and he was like, uh, hey, they're, you know, they're about to meet a city hall, um, a whole bunch of people, you know, big thinkers and big CEOs and all that. They're going to be talking about this revitalization plan for Atlantic City. And I was like, well, okay, it was not an invite. He just told me about it. He was just like trying to pick my brain about it. But I decided to show up to this meeting at City Hall. Um, and I showed up. And it was the CEO of casinos. It was the president of a college and university. It was the owners of all the real estate in Atlantic City. It was the uh, late Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. Wow. It was um, the Jim Johnson who took a dollar salary to work on a revitalization plan for Atlantic City. All these people were in the room. I didn't know who they were at the time. But they all were in the room. And um, I sat there in the back, kind of trying to hide. And they were all talking about what are we going to do with Atlantic City because it's so important to the economy of the state of New Jersey. And I was like, these people get it. Like, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Um, and on my way out, I tried to skate out. And my friend Elijah had told me, he was like, I want you to meet this guy named Joe. And I was like, okay, he still didn't give me any background on it. So on my way out, he pointed him out. I introduced myself um, to a gentleman named Joe, who ended up being my first client in my business a, a month and a half decided Joe Jim Golden, business mogul in the construction industry, uh, yeah. casino owner. He had just bought it, taken on my uh, home casino, and he was my first client at the time. And I didn't have <laughs> He took a chance on me, his team took a chance on me, they met to me, they guided me, held my hands throughout the process, and I began to go on my journey as a, a publicist, public relations practitioner um, with Joji Goldie, and the field just opened up from there. And what I stand on today, and the platform, the opportunity um, that I've had, or 
be out my bonnet stream. I have a team today, my partner in crime, Kate Crawford, my best friend and uh, partner to my business. Um, I have Tiffany here too, who has just been, you like to have the people that you know support you and motivate you. Um, and in that, what I've realized is that not my greatest success are the clients I have, and I have some really cool clients that I started with and I still have to this day. So I started my company, my first one in 2018, I still am with every single client that I started with. I have not lost a client yet. Um, and, All right. um, and, it's not, and it's not just about that, but the greatest part of what I do today is that I get to create opportunities for people like me. I get to stretch my hand forward, not back, forward, and say, here's an opportunity. I get to say to young people, and I get to show up looking just how I look, that I don't have to change, that I'm the tattoo Pierce girl from Atlantic City, 48 blocks, and I still am successful, you know, and that it's still possible. And so I get to do that every single day. That's that's the greatest part of my success. That's the greatest part of my journey. And I'll leave you guys with this, that um, the greatest human act is to inspire. I thank God for the opportunity to be on this stage with you all. We're great thinkers together, and I hope I was able to leave you with that. God bless you. Yeah.